The formula for the Miami Dolphins winning football games this season is going to look a little different than what we expected. How can the defense do their part? And what has this year shown us thus far? We're discussing that here today on Locked on Dolphins. You are Locked on Dolphins, your daily Miami Dolphins podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Miami, welcome to another episode of Locked On Dolphins. It is your team every day here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Krabs, a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, host of Locked On Dolphins, co-host of Locked On NFL Scouting, author of Touchdown Miami on Substack, and the NFL Draft Lead for the 33rd team. Our show's here on the Locked On Network. You can find them on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Tip of the cap to our everydayers, because it is your team every day. We don't just say it. We live it here on the Locked On Network. Today's episode of Locked On Dolphins is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a free three-week trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Defense. Focus here today on the show. The Dolphins officially putting to a tongue of Aloha on injured reserve yesterday at the 4 p.m. deadline to make a roster move to make room for Tyler Snoop Huntley as the new quarterback in the quarterback room. Uh, Ian Rappaport went on an NFL Network this morning and even kind of suggested that don't be surprised if Huntley gets himself uh, a package of plays as early as this weekend against Seattle. And I think that's a very fascinating discussion to really dive into. Perhaps something we'll make some time for a little later this week. Who knows? Uh, but right now, I'm going to focus on the defense because there's a lot of new on this defense. And there's uh, we're, we're playing the waiting game for Brit getting Bradley Chubb back to this defense. Uh, Jalen Phillips, two games in in his return from an Achilles injury. A lot of vets, a new defensive coordinator. Uh, some tough assignments as far as catching Buffalo in week two with one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And obviously they scored 31 points. The offense scored 24 offense needed to score 11 and win the game. Uh, game was largely over in the second half. Buffalo. I don't want to say they took their foot off the gas because Josh Allen scrambles on third downs, tried to take some shots. They, they tried to do some ball control stuff, but um, I think it's difficult to just look at the box scores and get a feel for where this Dolphins defense is at. And that's why today on the show, I wanted to commit to the performance against Buffalo, but also the year to date kind of stock watch. And then moving forward, like things that I think we need to see more of from the Dolphins defense and things I'd like to see a little bit, or maybe not things, but people I'd like to see a little bit less of on the field. Uh, as we continue to install this Anthony Weaver defense, which has a very broad menu uh, and vast menu of things that it can throw at opposing offenses. So um, if this, I, I will say this about the performance against Buffalo. I really respect the way that the defense played down the stretch in this game. It was very apparent. The Dolphins have their quarterback go down. They're not really going to be in a position uh, to score a lot of points and catch up. And even when they were down 14 at the start of the second half, I still thought the defense played hard. They played with pride. And that kind of stuff matters because as you shift your focus and look at at least the month ahead without Tua Tungvaloa, and, and the, the recipe for winning games is going to be different. There's going to be... Uh, more pressure on the defense. I think there's going to be a little bit more clock control on offense, a little bit more methodical drives. Hopefully the expectation is not the same on offense with Skylar Thompson. I think that's the worst thing that you could do. So defensively, this group is going to have to carry a little bit more of the load. I think there's some really promising individual performances against Buffalo in week two, Jordan Brooks, and I know his PFF grade was elite, but I, I do my own grading with the objective being um, I want to not get a number out of 100. I want to look at on a snap-by-snap -snap basis, and we, we I make all this available over on uh, Touchdown Miami. There's also a 55-minute coach's film look at the offensive line through the pick six 
from week two to look at the offensive line because it's all I see anybody talking about on social media this week is the offensive line. So we looked at the individual performers on every play on the offensive line for the first two and a half quarters of the game. It's over on Substack on uh, Touchdown Miami. But these grades, you can find them over on a game-by-game basis over on Substack. I'll make sure I drop a link. But um, Jordan Brooks migrating checked out alongside, and it doesn't always do this, it checked out alongside uh, PFF's grades. Jordan Brooks played an elite football game. He His individual performance, I thought, was very high level for what he did in coverage, making plays down the field, picking up a wide receiver out of the backfield on a wheel route for a potential explosive play, uh, negotiating blockers, deconstructing blocks, getting off blocks, get, getting into gaps in the run game communicating with David Long a little bit better this week than in week one against Jacksonville to make sure they were on the same page, that they weren't both jumping into the same gap. Uh, Jordan Brooks, very exciting development for the Dolphins' defense. This is some marquee linebacker tape that the Dolphins now have from week two against Buffalo. And, you know, unfortunately, it's you need a lot more than marquee linebacker tape to win the football game, right? But if you look at individual player performances, uh, that's a great place to start. I thought Chop Robinson had a better game than he did against Jacksonville. Obviously, the, the sampling was a little bigger. He had 24 snaps uh, against Buffalo versus 15 against Jacksonville in week one. Uh, converted speed to power on, on Deion Dawkins, who's one of the better left tackles in football. Uh Good opportunities with some twist exchanges to get into interior gaps and create pressure. Uh, getting down the line of scrimmage as the backside defender away from the formational strength uh, to chase down the running back and make a play. Those kinds of things are kind of foundational. You could start to build on that. So for two new players that are pieces of the puzzle for you, getting performances like that and getting more consistent performances like that while hopefully continuing to see a trend upward in Jalen Ramsey. I thought he was better against Buffalo than he was against Jacksonville. Uh, everybody looks at the explosive play that went to Ty Johnson with Josh Allen getting outside the pocket. And I it, it, Ramsey's the player that makes the play on at the one-yard line on Ty Johnson. But it looked like cover two or palms, and, and Ramsey's in the flat on the perimeter. And Josh Allen flushes outside because Jalen Phillips loses his footing on the play. So Josh Allen can get outside the pocket to his right. And Javon Holland sees a crosser coming across the middle, and he buzzes down off of his too high safety leverage on that half of the field. And Ramsey's in the flat, and Ty Johnson kind of runs by him at the same time and goes back into the middle of the field, and he's got to identify and try and plaster that. Um, so in the same way that Jalen Ramsey was instinctually able to be in the vicinity to try to make a play, with the Brian Thomas touchdown, even if it wasn't necessarily his responsibility, it's kind of how I interpreted uh, the play, the scramble play that was the big play that set up uh, the touchdown to put you down 17 to seven in the first half. Uh, so I didn't necessarily attribute his, his coverage responsibility to be at fault for why that play happened. I think it's unfortunate that uh, nobody on the Dolphins team was prepared to play on a slick surface and your edge rusher, your best edge rusher slips and falls down when engaged with the right tackle. And against a guy like Josh, I mean, he, he does that to us three times a game. Every time we play him, he gets outside and he's dead sprint to his right and throws one back in the middle of the field for an explosive player touchdown. Like it, <laughs> it happens all the time. We've seen the story a billion times. So uh, the point being, Guys, new guys like Jordan Brooks, Chop Robinson, performing well, in addition to hopefully Jalen Ramsey can get back into the swing of things a little bit more. Hopefully Jalen Phillips continues to get his footing back underneath of him a little bit more. Um, Zach Sealer, I thought, was a strong performer against Buffalo. Like there's, there's room for your impact players to grow into being right and being in more position to make some plays but it's the peripheral and ancillary players and the new players that you weren't quite sure what you were going to get. Those guys being the guys who are setting positive tones early is I think a promising development for the defensive side of the football. Now there's still miscommunications. There's still misalignments. I don't know who was supposed to be in what gap on the, the James cook long touchdown run, but I know uh, David long kind of leverages outside 
even though there's a corner that can step into that gap who is stepping down into that gap. So then he's stuck on a block and James Cook runs through it and Jordan Poyer takes a terrible angle coming downhill and then he loses the foot race. So like there's things like that. And at the end, at the root of it is Deshaun Hands, the only guy in three gaps is getting blocked by three guys. So structurally you're wrong, right? Structurally you're wrong, but then that's compounded by not consistently feeling where your help is and where your leverage is. So those are things that I'm looking for uh, moving forward. We're going to do some year-to-date stock watch, though, uh, for defensive players, stock up, stock down, uh, who we're going to need to see more from, who I may be tired of already. We're going to get into all that here today on Locked on Dolphins. Make sure you stick with us. Football season is here, and... If you don't want to miss any of the games on Sunday, but you get that craving for your favorite local game day meal, you can get all of your favorite local cuisines courtesy of DoorDash. Football is finally back. Make sure you order your favorite game day foods, snacks, and drinks on DoorDash without missing a play. You can use promo code LOCKEDFALL24 for 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. This is a limited time offer. Terms do apply. Promo is not valid for orders containing alcohol. DoorDash, your door to game day greatness, your door to more. Download the DoorDash app now to order your game day favorites. Must be 21 or older to order alcohol. Please drink responsibly. Alcohol available only in select markets. You have heard us talk quite a bit about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We do for the last couple of days here, uh, bringing home week three of the NFL season, have a special offer for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a free three-week trial of NFL Sunday Ticket with YouTube and YouTube TV. All you need is a YouTube TV base plan. You'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. You need a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. So visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sportsbook. If I told you who uh, the top year-to-date defensive grades are uh, that I have, I don't think you'd be surprised to hear names like Zach Sealer and Jalen Phillips and Jordan Brooks and Calais Campbell among the top five names. Obviously, there's a couple of new guys there. Chop Robinson's also in the top five. Uh, It's just not necessarily been a high volume. They've been a little selective with their menu of where he's getting his reps. Uh, And I thought you saw that there were a couple of run reps at the point of attack against Buffalo's tight ends where uh, he was challenged a little bit and got a little stuck on those blocks. But that that growth potential, I know everybody's going to look at the first round pick and they're going to look at the other issues on the roster and they're going to look at wide receiver and they're going to look at um, offensive line with Graham Barton. And we did the offensive line yesterday with as far as uh, the execution and ability to run the ball. Um, everybody's going to poke holes through the problems on the roster. And I understand that. And these are things that are frustrating. They are things that are barriers to success for you as a football team. But the early returns on Chop Robinson, I I think you have to be pretty encouraged by. Now, if you're only going to watch the game and you're going to ask yourself, did he have any sacks? No. Okay, where's the place? Then you're going to be set up for success. And I'm going to be honest, I do not have the willpower or the strength to have another sacks versus pressure versus um, the value of those reps debate. We did that with Jalen Phillips. The first two years, Jalen Phillips was here and the sacks weren't coming. And then everybody realized that, Oh, Jalen Phillips is actually kind of good. And then when they traded for Bradley Chubb, we had the exact same debate and that they gave up a first round pick and pay Bradley Chubb. And he's not making plays. Uh, even though there's an outstanding amount of pressure when he's on the field and the team's sack percentage went up and their pressure percentage went up 20% when they had Bradley Chubb on the field versus off the field in 2022. And I I don't want to hear this debate again. (laughs) And and I know it's going to come unless Chop starts getting some sacks. Uh, But I got some bad news for me. When you're playing a team and you're down two to three touchdowns, 20, 25 minutes into the game, you're not going to get a whole lot of opportunities to rush passer and tally sacks. That's just the way it works. Uh, As far as stock down guys, um, 
it's been a really frustrating start again for Cater Kohu, I thought, uh, watching the game tape. And uh, there are some instances where there's explosive plays on the table, courtesy of kind of dropped stems up the field. Think about Jacksonville with the big seam uh, that Jacksonville had on one of their explosive plays in the middle of the field. I thought against Buffalo, uh, there were uh, whether they, the Dolphins were made to pay for them with actual targets to that vicinity or not. Um, there was at least two different occasions where I thought we didn't handle and pass off and or or anticipate having to carry vertical routes out of the slot again. And for Cater, uh, I acknowledge where he was best in 2022 was in a man heavy scheme. We're not running a lot of man heavy stuff and we run man coverage, but it's not all we do like the dolphins of, of 2022. And for this to be another new scheme with more um, on the fly decisions, uh, I think it's, it's fair to ask, you know, if the growth is not going to happen, is there other ways that we can get personnel on the field to execute? Um, and I'm not saying that, that I, the ship has sailed on Cater Kohu. I think he's still there are opportunities in man coverage. Uh, and he's shown some versatility where they, they do things with the safeties to put them in the underneath zones and then ask him to play deeper or outside. There's things that you could still do with Cater Kohu for him to be a productive player. But the consistency of it and the consistency of the decision making in the middle of the field where the margin for error, um, if it's not right, you're at risk of more explosive plays is just – kind of an area that I have a star next to as I'm looking at the current iteration of the Dolphins defense through the first two games and ask myself what needs to get better, right? Um, I think the the defensive line rotation is a little bit of a concern. Um, they made some changes in the second half with Buffalo obviously up multiple scores to kind of get back into some of your odd front defense uh, with your, your three down players uh, and get a trio of Benito Jones and Zach Sealer and Calais Campbell and Deshaun hand uh, and, and Brandon Peely get, get some rotation of those guys into the front. Uh, Brandon Peely played single digit snaps against Buffalo. Benito Jones played 15 snaps. I thought he was, serviceable as a nose. There was one opportunity where they, they kind of ran outside or wide zone and uh, thought he lost his footing as the, the front got stretched, but that was the play that, that chop Robinson was able to run it down from behind. Uh, so if you're expecting teams to run physically at you, and I think this week against Seattle is probably a good expectation for, for that case. Don't, don't think we're going to see Kenneth Walker, the running back, but Zach Charbonnet is a power back that runs between the tackles. Um, your early down stuff, maybe, maybe more of your odd fronts and less base nickel. And if you are going to go nickel, and we'll talk about this in just a minute, moving forward, what I'd like to see more of, I think there's some personnel adjustments that you can make. Um, Jordan Poyer didn't score particularly well, but Jordan Poyer also didn't score particularly well because he got popped for a 15 yard penalty. Uh, that was part of a brutal exchange for Miami where you did have him backed up and it's a one score game. And all of a sudden you look up and they're at midfield because there's an explosive play that I th think we kind of mixed up middle of the field responsibilities because you got Kendall Fuller on the outside who's gearing down as Khalil Shakir swings out of the backfield. But then David Long is the middle of the field zone defender and he drives all the way out there. So you got two guys sitting on the swing in the backfield and it opens up the void for Josh Allen to rip the ball uh, to Khalil Shakir. And then Jordan Poyer gets popped for a 15 yard penalty for helmet to helmet contact on the same play. Uh, so you had a couple of negatives on that play that yield the middle of the field deep target against too high safety coverage, and Poyer trying to come down and, and cut that route across the middle is late, and he's also caught hitting a guy with his helmet on somebody else's helmet. So um, I think the range for Poyer just watching on film is the biggest question that I have for him. Uh, we've only seen a handful of snaps for Marcus May through two games. It's single digits. Maybe you'd like to see more. I think that's that's probably a place that I'm I'm ready to start asking for. 
as well. We're going to get into moving forward uh, what this Dolphins defense must look like as the Dolphins try to continue to win games amidst their offensive locks. That's next year on Lockdown Dolphins. Make sure you stick with us. If you're in the Pacific Northwest and trying to go to the game on Sunday or you want to go to a Canes game or you want to go to Dolphins Titans on Monday Night Football, get your tickets through game time. They take the guesswork out of buying tickets. It's everything from sight lines from your seat so you know exactly what kind of view you're going to get before you purchase your tickets, all in prices so you know exactly how hard those tickets are going to hit your wallet before you hit purchase. And just a few taps, you can get the tickets delivered directly to your phone. So there's no questions about where your tickets are. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. You can create an account and you can co use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. I keep asking for Big Nickel. And I'm going to continue to ask the Dolphins for more Big Nickel. Now, the challenge with Big Nickel this week against Seattle is you've got Jackson Smith and Jigba who had double-digit catches in Week 2. You have Tyler Lockett, and you have DK Metcalf who went for double-digit catches in Week 2. Uh, you have a very vertical passing attack. Uh, I do think this is a week where... Um, Seattle should not strain your front the way that Buffalo did, or I think Jacksonville is capable of, but their skill players are every bit as robust, probably the most robust group that, that you will face uh, thus far this season. Uh, Buffalo obviously has James Cook, Ray Davis in the backfield, a thunder and lightning element. They've got two tight ends that are capable of catching the ball. Obviously, the ceiling with Kincaid is much higher than that of Dawson Knox, but then they have shifty slot types. In Khalil Shakir, who had some big plays in week two. You contrast that to Jacksonville with Brian Thomas, who kind of got a lot of the run for you, and Christian Kirk, who missed a couple opportunities to, to catch some footballs, and um, Evan Ingram as an athletic tight end type. Uh, I think Seattle's the one that will, will most authentically stress your nickel. So the pressure this week, I think, falls a little bit more onto the front to win if you're going to have to play. And I'd be a little bit more comfortable playing some more man coverage this week than last week, uh, the last two weeks, really. Gino's an athletic player at the quarterback position, but he's not the same level of, of athlete that you see uh, with Josh Allen and the way that he kills teams with his legs or Trevor Lawrence's uh, a, a low key sneaky athlete at the quarterback position. Gino um, can move, but he wouldn't kill you like those other guys do with their legs. So maybe the answer this week is a little bit more man. Um, and then you're going to get into a, a couple of teams after that, most notably Tennessee, who's giving a pressure on almost 50% of their dropbacks who I think the answer there is you're going to run a lot of zone and you're going to pressure. Um, so the strategy each week is going to look a little different. But for Miami, the defense has to help set the tone and not fall behind in games early, right? You, you have to have some, some splash plays. They haven't done it the first two weeks. How quickly is the extra rest going to be uh, helpful for you to kind of get everybody on the same page so that the communication breakdowns are less? The good news is that I thought there were less communication issues in week two than they were in week one. But your communication issues still allow Buffalo to go from inside the 20 to midfield in two plays and allow them to score a 49-yard touchdown after a turnover on downs. Can't happen. Can't happen. You, you tip the cat on great plays like they, they ran – Mesh traffic, which is what the Dolphins hit the Cowboys with just before halftime last year, before they went into halftime and scored that touchdown. That was the same call that Buffalo called on the fourth down on their first possession after the first interception. Oh, you get a rub on the linebacker. Unfortunately, the, the, the guys uh, at, at corner and safety on the half of the field, uh, they're, they're looking at their keys so they don't see the back flowing out there, so they get out there a little late, and they're not in position to make the tackle, and you give up a big play for a score. That's unfortunate. It's a really good play call. You tip your cap, you call them in man coverage. But um, 
some of these other explosive plays that you've you've given up. You have a safety that gives up deep half responsibility on a scramble drill. You have a personal foul penalty that that turns a 20-yard gain into a 35-yard gain, and you give up a 49-yard touchdown because you're not lined up right. You get the linebacker jumping outside, even though there's a corner to help leverage outside, and the run goes right up the mid splits the spine of the, spine of the defense. Safety makes a bad angle. I mean, that, you could boil that down to that. I think you clean those things up. You feel pretty darn good about the defensive performance, regardless of what the offense looked like and the self-inflicted wounds that the team had. So go out and do it against Seattle. We'll see what happens. You can keep it locked in right here on Locked on Dolphins. We have crossover Thursday tomorrow with Locked on Seahawks as we get ready for week three Dolphins Seahawks. That's coming your way next. You can keep it locked in right here on the Locked on Network. I'm Kyle Krabs. And find us on YouTube or wherever you list your favorite podcasts. Make it a good one. I'm out of here. Go Fins.